We want to show that this result is true using proof by induction. And remember that proof by induction is a two-step process. We start by showing the result is true for the first case. That's often called the basic step. And the basic step is generally quite straightforward. Then we have got the inductive step, which is the more challenging part of the proof. That's where we assume the result is true for some general case, like the kth case, and show that that implies the result is true for the next case, the k plus one -th case. So without further ado, let's go on with this example. So we'll start with the basic case. The basic case in this, uh, basic step, sorry, in this case is when n is one. So we're just gonna let our n value equal one. So we're trying to show the left hand side is equal to the right hand side when n is one. So we're gonna take the sum from r equals one to just one, which looks a little bit odd, but that's often how these are in these proof by induction questions. And this question involves factorial. So we've got r factorial multiplied by r. We're putting in only one because this summation is running from just one to one. So it's just gonna be one factorial times uh, multiplied to one. So maybe just use some brackets here, one factorial times one like this. One factorial is just one. One times one is just one, so that just comes out to be one. Just a general point on factorials, if you're not used to those, so something like five factorial is just notation that means five multiplied to all the numbers below five, so five times four times three times two times one. In general, n factorial is n times n minus one times n minus two, all the way down to the three times three times one. So it's capturing all the numbers below it. So that there would be the left hand side. We want to show that's equal to the right hand side. So the right hand side is when n is one, we're going to get one plus one factorial. So one plus one factorial minus one. One plus one obviously is two, so that's two factorial minus one. Two factorial is just two times one, which equals just two. So that's just two minus one, which is one. So these are equal, so that completes basically the first part, the basic step. So we've shown that for the first case, this result is indeed true. Now the more challenging part we wanna work up is the um, inductive step. So it's useful, not needed, but useful as part of your work in to maybe just write out more fully what these are. So we're going to assume that this result is true for the general case n equals k. That really means just replacing the n's in this original um, formula with k. So we're going to assume that the sum, just put it here, so we're going to assume that the sum from r equals one up to uh, k of this expression, r factorial r, so r factorial r is equal to k plus one factorial minus one. So k plus one factorial minus one. So that's our assumption. We need to use that as part of the inductive step. If you find yourself doing one of these and you don't use your assumption, or you don't have an assumption, then something's gone wrong. You need to use that. We're gonna use that later on in our working. We then want to use that assumption to show the result is true for the k plus one case. So that's gonna be the sum r equals one to k plus one of r factorial r. And basically we're just replacing the n with a k plus one this time. So that's gonna be k plus one plus one, which will be k plus two factorial minus one. So that's got to come out to be k plus two factorial minus one. If we complete this step, then the whole proof will be complete. So I'm just gonna put this in a sort of bracket just to show that's not really part of our work and it's just our kind of guide. Okay, so this is what we wanna show. We wanna start with this here and somehow show that we can turn that into that. So we're starting with this guy. Here. So it's gonna be the sum from r equals one to k plus one of r factorial r. This is a sum from one to k plus one. We're gonna split that as a sum from one to k plus that final term, the k plus one term. So it's gonna be the sum, and this is a really common method in questions involving summations, and we'll split it to the first k terms, and that's really so that we can then use our assumption. So the sum from r equals one to k of r factorial r, plus that k plus one term, that final term. But the final term is just when you take this guy and substitute in the final term, which is k plus one. So that's gonna be k plus one factorial times k plus one. 
Okay, it's not easy. It looks a little bit clunky. It does take a bit of experience to get used to these. This though now matches up with the part we're allowed to assume. In other words, it matches up with this guy here. So we know from our assumption that this is just equal to k plus 1 factorial minus 1. So I've just replaced in this assumption with this guy here. And then these guys are just the same. So k plus 1 factorial times k plus 1 like this. This is always the challenging part, is how do I now get from here to here? Depends what the question's about. These questions could be about a wide range of different things. How you get from there to there really does depend upon your algebraic, how you see it algebraically. People go about these in different ways. There are different ways to do them. Sometimes you just got to play around with the options until you get where you need to be. So one thing I'm, I'm going to do here, I'm just going to put this minus one term on the end because here we've got a term. So we've got three terms here. One, two, three. This is all one term. These two terms have got a common factor of k plus one factorial. So I'm going to want to group those together so that I can then use that common factor. So I'm just rewriting this as k plus one factorial plus k plus one factorial times k plus 1, and then we've got a minus 1 tagged on the end like that. It's always worth just keeping half an eye on where you're trying to get to to see if you're sort of moving in the right direction, although it can be tricky to sometimes you know, sometimes to see how you're going to get from there. To you've just got to kind of go with the algebra. Common factor here of k plus 1 factorial, so k plus 1 factorial, which seems like a, an odd common factor, but um, again, it's just something that we need to get used to. And then we're going to open a bracket. And in, I'm going to use a square bracket. And inside that bracket, we need um, something for this term, which would be just a 1. Something for this term, which would be a k plus 1, like this. The minus 1 is not part of the common factor the factorizing process. That just hangs out in the end. Just checking that factorizing. So this guy here times 1 gives us that. And this guy here times k plus 1, which you could, if you want, put in a bracket. This guy here times that gives you that term. So that is the correct factorization. But you can see now that the inside of that bracket becomes a k plus 2. Okay, just a k plus 2. Don't need the square bracket anymore. And then we've got a minus 1 on the end. So we're fairly close now to getting where we need to be. We've kind of got that minus 1 on the end, but we don't have a k plus 2 factorial. We've got a k plus 1 factorial and a k plus 2, just a normal k plus 2. So how do we get to there? Well, this is where, in this particular question, you would need to think a little bit about the factorials. So maybe just a bit, as a bit of side work, and I'll do that over here. So if we think about what that is, so k plus 1 factorial times k plus 2. So the order in which you multiply things doesn't matter. So I'm just going to reorder those to put the k plus 2 term first. So we're going to get k plus 2 bracket k plus 1 factorial. K plus 1 factorial though, remember I said about the factorials, that it just multiplies to every number below it. So 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 in the case of 5 factorial. But notice that each of those numbers is 1 less than the previous number. So k plus 1 factorial, um, in fact let me just write the k plus 2 first, but the k plus 1 factorial just starts with k plus 1 and then it's got the next term below that which would be a k and then it's got one less than that, which is k minus 1. And then it keeps going all the way down until you've eventually got, say, a 3. And that would multiply to a 2 times a 1. So it just captures that. But if you notice what we're now left with, we've now got k plus 2, then k plus 1, then k, then k minus 1. And that goes all the way down to 1. In other words, these are still now in a perfect sequence where you're taking 1 off every time. Because k plus 2 take away 1 gives you k plus 1. So this guy here, all of this, is in fact k plus 2 factorial. So this here, k plus 1 factorial times k plus 2, is actually equal to k plus 2 factorial. So that result, you're going to need to know a little bit about factorials. But if I then pull that over here, we get k plus 2 factorial for these guys, minus 1, and that's the result that we were trying to prove. So that gives us our second step, the inductive step. And that completes the proof uh, by induction. Proof by induction is not easy. You need to learn the overall steps. You need to learn what you're looking out for. Every question is also going to be a little different. So it does take a bit of practice and a bit of experience.